I'm Greg with Greg's Airbrushing, and uh, I'm going to show you guys pretty much how to break down and understand an airbrush. We're going to go ahead and demystify the airbrush so where it's not so scary to the beginners that it keeps them from wanting to try it out. First of all, the airbrush is just a, it's a real delicate tool that allows an artist to control paint in combination with air. The airbrush itself has been around for about a hundred years now, but over time it's been developed to atomize paint in such a cool way that it allows you to do amazing things like write, paint, shadow, color, all with one tool. Kind of like having a pencil that can do just about anything with one pass. So now I'm going to demystify the airbrush and show you how simple it is and its functionality and how it operates. Take a look. Okay, so what I've just done is drawn the innards or the guts of the airbrush. As you can see, my needle locking nut is here. My needle is here. And what takes place is this here. When you depress the trigger of the airbrush, all you should get is air. If you're getting paint, then there's something wrong and we will get into the detail of what could possibly be wrong. The second step of a double action airbrush is when you pull it back you get a combination of air and paint. If it's closed and all you do is depress the trigger all you should get is air. Once you pull that trigger back you get a combination of air and paint. Depending on how far you pull the trigger back will determine how much paint you get. As you can see, as I pulled it back very far. This here is the trigger. The trigger 
the pressure is a strike plate, which allows the air to flow through your airbrush. You see these two dots right here? These are air hose that the air flows through. Then over top of your, knee, your nozzle, the little cone-like shape in your airbrush, there are going to be three individually spaced hose that once the air passes through them, they create a cone-like pattern, which is how your paint comes out of your airbrush. But over time, there were artists who would airbrush like this. which means they would depress the trigger and spray air, but they let it go. So what happens to the paint when you depress the trigger and then let it go? So right here in the diagram, once you depress the trigger, a suction creates a vacuum and the paint stops right here at the tip of your needle and your nozzle, right here in this area. The paint stops. It's ready to go. Now, when you pull your trigger back, it hits a strike plate, pushes back on the spring, and then moves your needle back, creating a hole right here in between, or a space in between your nozzle and your needle. Now, depending on how far you pull your needle back will determine how much paint comes out or how much air comes out in general so to say. so if you pull your trigger back very slightly you're going to get very little if you pull it back a lot this hole that's created here is going to release a lot of paint now here's where the confusion comes in let's say you're writing and you're just writing a name are making a pattern and you stop what happens to the paint most of the paint is going to fall back into your bottle there will be remnants of paint that will be in your uh, airbrush but not enough to keep a steady flow a consistent flow in all cases so what tended to happen over the years is that a person would start writing and then stop and then want to start again however the paint wouldn't come out of their airbrush until they were halfway down the shirt or whatever surface they was on and they were wondering why this was happening well the paint hadn't got back up into the airbrush or into the nozzle that uh, as fast as they kind of moved their hand down whatever surface they were on so remember to always keep the air on. Always keep your trigger pressed down. Even when I stop and clean my needle off, I always keep the trigger depressed. Keep it pressed down so your paint is always at the ready. When it comes to your bottle, I'm so glad that for the most part, the airbrush world is moving to plastic bottles or have moved to plastic bottles because back in the day we used to have these types of bottles the old triangle bottles made out of glass okay and what would happen is that there's a small hole over top of the bottle and it allows the bottle to breathe. If that hole is covered or sealed, the bottle is going to be filled full of air pressure and before you know it, when you take your airbrush off of your bottle, all the air inside the bottle shoots out your paint all over your project. I've been there, I know a lot of you guys have been there, this is why it happens. So with the glass bottles, you really couldn't feel the bulge of the bottle expanding. And if you dropped them, there's a 70% a chance that you're going to break the bottle. So I'm definitely glad that we moved to plastic bottles. 
But remember, the most important part of what I just discussed is making sure that the little hole in the top of your bottle is free of any paint and your bottle can breathe. So just a quick summary. Uh, once you depress your trigger on your double action, you're going to get air. The reason why you get air in paint with an airbrush is this needle nut locking me mechanism holds your needle in place so that when the trigger pulls back against the strike plate, it creates an opening between your nozzle and your needle. So your needle moves backwards, allowing a hole or an opening here so that the paint can pass through. So in a nutshell, you guys really know now how an airbrush works, how it functions. It shouldn't be so scary uh, as it pertains to uh, utilizing an airbrush. You press down the trigger, you get air, you pull back, you get air and paint. Also, there is an airbrush out there called a gravity feed. A gravity feed has the cup basically sitting on top of the airbrush. It's almost like a bowl and you fill it full of paint and it comes into the airbrush as such. A gravity feed most of the time is used for high detailed items uh, but that's your difference. Gravity feed, siphon feed, or bottom feed. Hopefully this right here helps to kinda make the airbrush less scary to you guys. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel uh, and give us some feedback on what you guys want to learn. Uh, until next time.